Hi, I'm Dan Carter Passy. Welcome to Model Building. In this episode, I'm going to continue working on my N scale narrow gauge 260 steam locomotive for our N scale Siren Creek project layout. So far in this build, I've modified an N scale River Rossi 040 boiler to fit my Marklin Z260 mechanism. I've added a 3D printed cab from Shapeways and added both commercial and fabricated details to the locomotive. In the last episode, I finished detailing the locomotive to the point where it's ready for paint. The model still needs a tender, so I'll tackle that next. My goals for this episode are to plan the tender, build the tender chassis, and install a coupler and drawbar. On Shapeways, I found something being sold as NN3 conversion parts. The set includes a tender body. The tender body is nicely modeled, if a little on the small side. Since I want my engine to represent something typical of the west coast, it would need to be converted to an oil tender. I could add a bunker on top like I did with this Atherin N-Scale 260. There are mounts for trucks, but in order to access the interior to install a DCC decoder, I think I would need to cut these out and build a new floor. Originally I hadn't planned on putting sound in this engine, but then ESU released the Loxound 5 nano decoder. It's small enough to fit inside this tender shell. That's all great, but this tiny locomotive only picks up current from its main drivers. On top of that, for some reason, Marklin made the middle driver set ride slightly high so that the wheels aren't really on the rails. I have two of these mechanisms and they're both like that, so I don't think it's a defect. I'm not sure why they did that, but it means that the engine is really only getting power from four wheels. I could put some wipers on the tender wheels to improve that, but I still think it may end up stalling a lot. One solution is to add a Loxound Power Pack Mini. Unfortunately, the capacitor on these is a little large. I don't think I can fit the decoder, power pack, and a speaker in this tender. I'm not a big fan of putting electronics in a permanently attached freight car, so I need to think of something else. This is the tender from my large-scale model of Southern Pacific No. 8. Tenders of this style were used by the SP, Nevada, California, Oregon, and the Pacific Coast. My book on the Pacific Coast has plans for an engine with this type of tender. The tender body scales out to 20 feet long and 7 feet wide. Using my large-scale model and the plans in the book, I've drawn a rudimentary outline of the tender body and end scale. The good news is that it looks like this tender design might have just enough room inside for all the electronics. The bad news is that I'll need to scratch build it. I want to make it so that the rounded tender body is detachable from the frame since I'll need to get inside to install the electronics. The tender deck is longer and slightly wider than the rounded tender body. The dimensions of the scale drawings in my large-scale model didn't quite match up, so I split the difference and went with 24 feet by 8 feet. I scratched the outline of the tender deck on a piece of 20 thousandths sheet brass. I'll cut out the piece using a fiber reinforced cutoff wheel and my motor tool. Then I'll clean up the edges with a file, followed by sandpaper on a piece of plate glass. Now I have the beginnings of my tender. I've marked the center line of the tender deck and then marked the truck centers which are inset 5 scale feet from each end. I'll drill pilot holes using a number 74 bit and a pin vise. Then I'll open up the holes with a 1 8 inch drill bit. This fits some 1 8 inch outside diameter brass tubing I have on hand. I'll use the tubing as the basis for the bolsters. The tender has a frame which extends below the deck about 10 scale inches. It's also indented in from the edges. I found this scrap brass bar in my stash of materials that's about the right thickness. It's also about the right width. If the large scale model is any indication, the frame under the deck is not solid, but I'm not too concerned about that. The thicker brass will help to add some weight to the tender. Unfortunately, my scrap piece has holes in it, but I think I can work around those. I'm cutting the piece a little shorter than the tender deck to leave some space for the end beams. I ended up using a razor saw, motor tool, and files to complete the cuts. Sandpaper on plate glass is a good way to clean up the sides of the frame, which will be exposed. I'll make a notch in the rear to leave room for a coupler mounting pad. That'll make it easier to adjust the coupler height later if I need to. Next, I'll solder the 1 inch tubing into the holes in the tender deck. I've cut the pieces a little shorter. They'll need to be shortened more later, but this is fine for the moment. I've cleaned up the solder joints with files and sandpaper, but there's still a small fillet where the tubing joins the tender deck. In order to get the tender frame to seat properly, I'm using a drill bit to bevel the edges of the holes to make room for the fillet. Now the parts fit tightly. My small iron isn't hot enough to join the thick tender frame to the deck with solder. Instead, I'm just going to build the tender chassis by gluing them together with CA. To reinforce the bolsters, I'll make a fillet with a small amount of epoxy. I'll set this assembly aside to dry for a while. Just a note of caution, don't try to heat up the metal after it's been glued with CA, as it will release a smoke that can sting your eyes and is probably toxic. I should be able to complete the rest of the tender chassis without soldering. The next step is to cut down the bolsters. I'll start with my motor tool. 
I'm cutting little bits at a time to avoid heat buildup. I'll clean the cuts of the file. I'll be using a pair of Microtrain's arch bar trucks for the tender. These look fairly close to what's on my large scale model, though at this size it's hard to make out the detail anyway. If I'm going to use the tender for electrical pickup, I'll need to swap the plastic Microtrain's wheels for metal ones. I prefer metal wheels anyway. Most recently I found these from Will's Wheels. I've used them on all my NN3 rolling stock. To swap them out, first I'll remove the plastic wheels. Then I'll insert the metal ones. It's a good idea to check to make sure that they spin freely. Since I want to use these for electrical pickup, it's important that the insulated wheels are on the same side on each truck. It's a little hard to see, but the insulated wheels have a black circle in the center. The non-insulated wheels are a uniform color. Now I can test fit the tender chassis to the trucks. The height above the rails is about the same as in Microtrain's NN3 flat car. It looks like there's still a little clearance above the wheels, so I could use a file and lower it a little more if I wanted to. Next I'll attach the trucks to the frame. My plan was to tap the tubing I used for the bolsters for a 2mm metric screw since I have some of those on hand. I successfully tapped the rear bolster. Unfortunately the front one must not have been soldered as well and came detached. That's okay though as I realized my plan had a slight flaw. For electrical pickup it would be better if one of the bolsters was insulated. I'm drilling out the front bolster hole again. I've glued in a piece of scrap sprue with CA. After waiting a while for the glue to dry, I've cut the plastic bolster down to size, drilled and carefully tapped it for a 2mm screw. The holes in the trucks are a little small for a 2mm screw, so I'll ream them out using a 2mm drill bit. That's still slightly small, so I'll finish up by spinning an X-Acto blade in the hole. Now I can mount the trucks to the frame. It's important that they pivot freely. With the wheels on, this is starting to look more like a piece of railroad equipment and less like a bunch of parts. Locomotives aren't much use if they can't pull anything, so having a coupler on the tender is essential. I'll be using a Microtrain's 905 Z-Scale coupler on the tender. It's the same kind I used on the locomotive pilot. The projection on the back of the Microtrain's height gauge shows where the coupler mounting pad needs to be in order for the coupler height to be correct. The notched area on the rear of the tender is a little higher, so I'll need to add a shim. It looks like some 20,000 styrene will get it to about the right place. I cut a small piece and glued it into the coupler mount area. The notched ends are to make room for the end beam, which I'll add later. Just like I did with the locomotive pilot, I'll drill out the coupler mounting hole with a number 62 drill bit. Then I can use a 0090 tap to thread the hole. Now I can mount the coupler to the tender chassis. I had to add a 5000 washer between the bolster and the rear truck, but now the coupler looks pretty close to the right height. I'll check it again when the build is close to being finished. On my large scale model, the end beams stick down a little below the frame. I found some 80 thousandths by 156 styrene strips in my stash of materials. These are a little big, but if I cut them down, they could work for the end beams. 80,000 square stock would be better, but I don't have any of that. This material is a little hard to cut with the tools I have. I found that whittling little bits off work best. Once it's cut to rough shape, I'll glue it to the tender chassis with CA. I'll file and sand the excess plastic using the brass tender deck as my guide. I used the same process for the rear end beam, only I had to use two pieces since there has to be a gap in the middle for the coupler. Now I need to make a drawbar to connect the tender and the locomotive. I'll start by removing the Marklin coupler from the rear of the locomotive chassis. I'll also get rid of the metal plate that holds the coupler in place. Let's see where we're at. The metal piece on the rear of the locomotive sticks out quite a bit, and it's too tall to fit under the end beam on the tender chassis. I've carefully removed the bottom cover plate from the locomotive chassis. This part has a pin for the coupler. The sides of the coupler box stick up. I think I might be able to make use of the existing coupler pin. I've wrapped most of the cover plate in blue tape to keep metal shavings out of the area that covers the locomotive's gears. I'll start with my motor tool and shave down the sides of the coupler box and remove a tiny amount of material from the top of the coupler pin. I'll finish up with files. Now the coupler pin will fit under the end beam at the front of the tender. The sharpest curves on the NN3 portion of our Siren Creek layout are 8 inch radius. To figure out the drawbar length, I place the locomotive and tender chassis on those curves. It looks like if I keep the coupler pin on the engine just slightly forward of the front of the tender, it'll work. This will put the front of the tender superstructure that I have yet to build about even with the back of the cab roof overhang. That looks similar to photos that I've seen of Pacific Coast narrow gauge steam locomotives, as well as my large scale model of SP number 8. I drilled a hole near the front of the tender and tapped it for a 0090 screw. I added a piece of 20,000 styrene as a spacer glued to the tender frame. This will put the drawbar down below the level of the end beam. My drawbar is just a piece of HO scale 4x10 strip styrene with a couple of holes drilled in it. The size isn't critical, it just has to fit. Using plastic is a precaution to eliminate any possibility of electrical shorts between the engine and tender. I think with the small size of this locomotive and the fact that it will seldom be pulling more than four or five cars at a time, it should be plenty strong enough. 
It's also easy enough to remake if it breaks. I had to cut the spacer piece down a little on the edges so that the wheels will still pivot. The test is to see if this setup will work on the curves. It looks like it will, which is great. My decision to scratch build an SP style tender was motivated by the need to fit a sound decoder, capacitor circuit, and speaker. The design should have enough room inside and has the added benefit of making the locomotive look more like a West Coast narrow gauge engine. It's sometimes better to do the basic construction of a model first than follow on with details later. I haven't installed small details like corner steps on the tender frame yet because I don't want to risk damaging them. I'll add those parts later after building the tender body. Having a solid mechanical connection between the engine and tender is just as essential as having a working coupler on the back of the tender. Eventually there will also be wires running between the engine and tender and the drawbar has to be solid enough to keep the tiny wires from getting pulled as the train moves. I thought of a few different ideas about how to make a drawbar, but I like the design I settled on. It's simple and easy to reconstruct if it ever gets broken. For this project I've been keeping a tally of how much I've been spending. The total from the last episode was $105. Like last time, many of the parts for this build were made from materials I already had on hand and I only use small amounts of those. I'm going to give a very rough estimate of $5 to cover the brass and plastic used this time as well as the metal wheels. The Microtrain's trucks I used are currently $6.40 on the Microtrain's website. I'll round that up to $7. That brings the current total to $117. Now that I have the tender frame complete, the next step will be to build the tender body. I'll tackle that in the next episode. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.